Hey, thanks for joining me again. Travis from The Knife Joker. Today coming at you again with another, well, a new model. Another new model from Cancept Knives. And, well, I know you're thinking three Cancept Knife videos in a row. But, yeah, another new model from Cancept Knives. The Cancept. Oh, I'm trying to look on this box. Shard. There, there it is. Shard. But yeah, the new Cancept Shard. I guess it has been out just a short while, and well, three Cancept Knife videos in a row. I mean, that's what's coming out. They're coming pretty hard with some pretty decent models. And the Shard, I don't know. It just seems like every Cancept model I feel I like just a hair better than the one before. Are they getting a little bit better? Am I just getting more used to them? You know, I'm not sure. We did a couple videos before and I'm not gonna show that whole box again. Um, we did in the first videos. But yeah, nice packaging. Watch the first videos. Won't do it three times in a row. But that shard, four point Four, oh, I'm sorry, three, three point four inch blade, four point four inch. Yeah, three point four inch blade. That Warren Cliffish. It's a flat grind. You can see that satin grind from a, coming from Cancept. Just once again, there's just keep flaunting their fit and finish now. As in the last few videos, I've been using a lot of different finishes. So this one, being that copper, copper inlay. Let's see the standoffs. Just a little bit heavier with that copper on. You can feel that copper side. So yeah, it's got that blade hole. Um, can't say you're gonna access the blade hole too easily. I do say you can thumb hole open it. That's pretty hard to do. The only way I've been able to use this hole is, is the pinch method. The pinching. But um, you have the spidey flick on the shard and even the thumb hole opener kind of been a failure to me, but you can pinch open it. And once again, well, there's that flipper tab on, on the shard. First one really with some jimping on the cancept knives that I've seen. And also, it's gonna be in a little push button area too. I mean, well, light switch, they call it, I guess, and a push button. Oops, bottom left. Little stand. Um, just to show you, the, there's that Cairo flipper. Smooth, not not really a push button flipper, just and that flipper tab on the spirit, pretty much well not the same thing, but a little different. You can see those three side by side. So blade hole oh, lightens up the blade, definitely lightens up the blade, and you can see once again they chamfer or take down the edge of these holes. So there's no, there's no sharp edges on these holes, that's for sure. But they did kind of that second layer in there. Oh, it looks pretty cool. Only, I don't know, I'm sure it's been done many times, or at least a few times. But just oh, the only one other coming off the top of my head was that Tuya Knife did something similar to that that taken down area, but I'm sure it's been done many times. Let's check out another version. Yeah, we're, I mean, what we're dealing with this K106A2. So having five versions in front of us, the A2 and the A3. So not only is the inlay different on this one, it's in a different spot and that's 
pretty cool. I mean, usually companies give you a different inlay, but not in a different spot, so to speak. You see on the top there, carbon fiber just being a uh, inlay. Still titanium underneath. And this one having that Timascus clip as well. So model number on this one, the three. Well, they're all K1006. This one's the A3. So, well, showing all the finishes they can do. Stonewash blade on this one, as opposed to the satin on the last. A couple of fingerprints on there. That shard, the stonewash blade, bead blast, Tamascus clip. Yeah, it's a nice looking clip, I guess, you know, especially in blue jeans or blue pants or orange pants. <laughs> now, pretty impressed with the overall fit and finish, like I said. These just, these can set knives just seem to be getting better and better. Pretty nice thing in there. Check out this next version well. Which one is it, in particular, the, the five, the five, the shard five. And once again, that stonewash blade still with the carbon fiber, still almost the same knife, isn't it? But you know, just a regular clip, probably keeping the cost down a little bit. You know, these, well, most of these Kensep knives seem to be coming in just under 200 bucks. And with that, Timascus be just a hair over. Yeah, I mean, well, detent, um, smoothness, these all seem pretty, pretty nice. Let's see that little two in a row. Look at these two in a row. Well, that's pretty good right there. Let's get into this next version. We did, I did have another version I was going to put on the video. Now it's gone. It did have the Timascus. Inlay on the front and Tamascus clip. Um, well, my buddy saw those online and, and well, they, they just, he bought them up real quick. Another copper inlay. That green titanium this time. That bead blast clip. Looking pretty nice with that color. I mean, we all know I like green. It seems to be just a barely blue-green aqua, possibly pretty shiny. And definitely interesting green that they used, chose, and came out with. Yeah, I, I like green. That's for sure. And once again, back to the satin blade on the brass versions. Seem to be those two carbon fiber versions with the Stone wash blade and these copper versions with the satin blade. One more version here in front of us. So, like I said, don't have that full Damascus version. It just, as soon as people saw it, it was gone. I'm gonna try to get some more in. I guess I'll miss the video. You can see some, well, one difference. None of these have had any different color than chrome or satin or. So her, these ones being that gold anodized, standing out on the, the black. It's again gonna probably be that satin blade, I would expect. That inlay. Well, you know, in all reality, they fool us and put this stone wash blade right on there. So it's pretty hard to generalize anything with Cancept on what finish you're gonna get on each model with this one being, let's take the number, number A7, K1006, A7. Just keep showing all the different finishes they could do and pretty impressed with the, uh, the feel in hand of these shards 
Again, about a four point, so, oh, yeah, I said that earlier. 3.4 inch blade. See, there it is. Trying to show you how much handle sticking out in my large size hand at this very moment. Fits pretty well in the hand. I should do it with the bead blast version. So the black one, you could see a little easier with that Tomascus clip sticking out. Fits well in a, in a large size hand. Maybe get a side by side with another knife or possibly weigh one of these up. Let's see what kind of weight we're dealing with. I believe these are somewhere around four, four ounces. Oh, well, yeah. I thought they were about around four ounces. I guess they are. Oh, right around four ounces. Oh, I should like it looking at that. It's great in this lighting. Get a side by side with another another knife here. Hmm, probably throw up that knife. I did on the last video, the Warrior, just because it's similar size and skinny. What I wanted to show is the shard is pretty slim in the handle, meaning, I'll do another side by I'll just bang this one out real quick. Like the Mannix is, well, we all know I like the Mannix. If you do watch my channel or the previous channel, the Travis Van Way channel, um, but the Mannix definitely wider, wider in the pocket, or would feel wider in your hand. You just feel pretty darn Slim, not quite as slim as the Warrior. So that Warrior, super um, slim. Been a little sidetracked with that Mannix coming in, but there's that Cairo. I'm gonna put a couple actual Cansep knives side by side. That Spirit. Once again, you can see, well, of course, the further knife looks a little smaller, but that spirit being a little bigger than the shard. Same thing, the Cairo, a little, little bigger, bigger than the shard. When you get that slim warrior in the mix, four different versions, well, four different actual models, should say, can set models. Jeez, well, might be four can set videos in a row, if I do do the Spirit next, um, it's coming, because it's pretty nice, pretty, pretty nice in hand. I'll try to mix it, or maybe I'll do, or maybe I'll do a real video or something in there. Do another couple side-by-sides real quick. Maybe, um, like I said, that Maddox is a lot bigger. It's more of the Wagner size, although the Wagner is a little bigger and probably will maybe closer to the size of the Spyderco Zawada, um, which is pretty pretty slim in the pocket. Some oddball side by sides, unexpected maybe side by sides, but yeah, it was from, I don't know. I thought of that Zawada for some reason, and I also actually thought of the the, the Kapara. Um, Pretty slim, the Capara, nice slim carry. I'll put it better side by side, maybe if I hold these up. Well, there's the, there it is by the Capara cup. Capara handle being a little bit bigger. Never did show actual back of the spine. No, no jumping there, but still being pretty beefy all the way down to near that tip. Of course, these are riding on ceramic ball bearings. And all have seemed pretty centered and flip good to me. Uh, if I'm doing the pull or the push or the halfway in between thing, but whatever it is, seems to work pretty darn well. You can see the back of these almost perfectly straight um, down the back of that knife. Well, thanks for joining me once again at the Knife Joker channel. If you do want to see more about these shards or any 
these concept knives, check them at thenifejoker.com. And if you'd like to just follow the channel, hit that subscribe button, and get a little, I guess, pop up or some sort of a notification. We'll have a couple new videos coming out. Some exciting things actually coming out. Have a great Sunday.